Hey everyone, welcome back to Werewolf the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest. It's, uh, I know it's been kind of a hot minute since I, uh, did one of these. Um, uh, I've mostly been focusing on my Pokemon Crystal Nuzlocke run for the time being, but, uh, as it turns out, this week my life just kind of exploded, and when I, uh, went to, uh, get the footage from my most recent, uh, uh, session of recording Pokemon Crystal. Well, um, let's just say I learned a valuable lesson about recording with Bluetooth. I'll elaborate more on that later. For now, let's just get back into the heart of the forest, shall we? I'm actually looking forward to this. I've, uh, been meaning to get back into this, because, uh, I, I do love me somewhere with the apocalypse, and I've been waiting forever for this game, so I might as well make good on it. Especially since we're about to get to the good part. And we might actually get to be a friggin' werewolf now. You're a visual novel. It should not take you this much time to load. Chapter 3. Standoff. I need to talk. I thought about going back to sleep, but I couldn't. Since I'd arrived in this village, I felt like I was falling down a rabbit hole, or rather a wolf's den. My dreams were getting more and more vivid, and I was scared. I needed to talk it over with someone I trusted. Okay, we can either go with Kim, who seems okay, Kim is sympathetic, or Anya is loyal. Anya was in it from the start. Yes, we're going with friggin' Anya. I am not keeping any secrets from her. She is my heart best friend. Oh, fuck me, it's a full moon. Oh, this is gonna be good. See, the significance of that is, I'm sure the game will probably explain later, assuming we go under our first transformation this night, but, uh... If we change under a full moon, that means we are in Arun, which is basically the werewolf warrior class, but, uh, you know what, I'll just let the game do its thing and tell its story, I won't tell it for it. I come here with Anya, and despite all the strange things I'd done, she still stuck with me. I messaged her, and she messaged me back. I'm on a walk, come join me. The sun had just set. And the moon wasn't up yet. Oh, fuck, this is getting romantic as fuck. I might be projecting a little bit, but oh my god, I so want this. Also, actually, I'm wrong. It turns out it's uh, the uh, moon you were born under. I think it kind of varies. It might depend. You know what? I'll let the story tell me what it is. I won't tell you guys. The forest loomed on the horizon. The activist camp was somewhere there. We met near the shop in Bialvieza. It was a characteristic enough point, and easy to get to from anywhere in town. What is it? Anya asked. She looked worried. Okay. I didn't see the difference at first. Something strange was happening to me. I... I know this sounds crazy, but... I think something strange is happening to me. I'm scared, Anya. There is definitely something strange happening, she nodded. But I have no idea what it is. I know even less than you, she frowned. Maybe we should go talk to your new friends, the activists. They... She smiled a little. They're weird, but they must know something. She had the best ideas. I smiled. That's why I came to you. You have the best ideas. She smiled and started walking. Let's go. I'm sure they're not sleeping. Oh my god, nothing better happened to Anya. She's a fucking Scandinavian cinnamon roll. The 
The camp had a different vibe than the logging site protest. There were more people there. We looked around, trying to take it all in. They're coming and coming! Anya laughed, excited. The people in the camp seemed quite cheerful. Someone was singing. I heard three or four girls singing together in a unique Eastern European style called The White Voice. It was the most melodic, throaty growling I'd ever heard. I listened for a moment. And goodbye, Rage! I stopped and just got lost in the music for a long while. People were milling about, setting up camp, cooking, preparing posters. Everyone was busy. I looked around. I definitely needed to talk to someone about what was going on, about what I felt. I needed to see Cornell. Hello, I said as I approached Cornell. He smiled at me. Hello, he said. What brings you here? I needed answers. I shrugged and dug my hands deeper into the pockets of my jeans. I have so many questions about myself, the forest, and the logging. Cornell looked at me with those uncanny gray eyes. I could feel his attention lock on me. It's okay, he said. Join us and you'll understand. We're here to stop what's happening. To show that we don't agree, that we hope to make a difference. Will it work? Will it work? I asked. I don't know. All I know is that it worked before. It worked for Gandhi. It worked with segregation and the apartheid in the end. <laughs> Maybe not in the way you think there, buddy. It worked with communism. <laughs> oh, I made a mistake talking to this son of a bitch. So let's see if it works with capitalism as well. <laughs> oh, violence is not an option here. Oh, God, no, I made a mistake. He smiled. And I think you know quite well that anger doesn't really get shit done. I didn't agree there! I suddenly felt uneasy. I've heard that phrase so many times. I said slowly. And you know what? I've seen anger getting shit done so many times. So maybe it's my turn to use it now. I'll see you around, I guess. Time to talk to Olga. Alright, note to self, don't trust my no rage decisions. I turned around and walked toward the far corner of the camp where Olga was. Olga spotted me right away. Well, hello again, she greeted me. I didn't expect to see you here so soon. Actually, she gave me a long, hard look. I didn't expect to see you again at all. I'm gonna join the banter. Aren't you just a ray of fucking sunshine? I said with a broad smile. She said nothing. Instead, just watching me cautiously. What brings you here, kid? She asked after a beat. I know it means, like, after a pause, but now I'm just picturing her just, like, looking at me and just munching on a beat before asking her question. <laughs> I don't actually know how Polish that is, but something about that just feels right. I'm confused, I answered. Is it really true? I mean, the stories you told me about my past and the forest. There's nothing to be confused about. She shook her head. It's perfectly clear that the government will destroy this unique forest 
if someone doesn't stop them. And you have your obligation to fulfill. She broke off and bit her lip. What do you want to do about it? I wanted to smash things. I want to do something, I said. Anything. I want to feel like I'm doing something that has a meaning that will change what happens. I feel like I could smash those harvesters with a hammer. Do you have a hammer? If I had a family debt to pay, I couldn't be just an observer anymore. She looked at me. Her eyes were a weird color, like deep, dark honey or molasses. I might, she said, but I need your support, because Cornell will try to push his own agenda. They all wanted to do something that night, but after a whole day's discussion, they were still divided on what to do. Three for one option, three for the other. I saw no reason to back up Cornell. Yeah, I mean, uh, curse me being a baby leftist, because on one hand, like, you can't just rely on, like, peace and non-violence, you gotta actually, like, make some noise and make your shit be heard, but also you gotta make sure you're not hurting your allies or your cause in the process. But at the same time, just peaceful protesting has consistently shown to do absolutely nothing and is constantly miscolored as the proper way to do things throughout history, where it just casually and conveniently omits all the uh, breaking shit that people do that finally makes uh, things change and forces people to listen and is painted as unfavorable. Fuck it, I'm gonna go for the preemptive strike because I'm a frickin' werewolf. Or at least I wanna be. Oh, screw you, Achievement! With a little help from my friends, I voted for direct action. And soon, we were on our way to the logging site. We had some harvesters to deface. If she wants in on this, I am not going to tell her no. This is so exciting, Anya whispered. I've never done anything so illegal. We were just a group of dark silhouettes running through the night. The moon was hidden behind the clouds. Hmm. I'm a motherfucking ninja stalking in the night. I hid in the shadows. I was glad about that. Gracious for the shadows that were hiding us. A new moon would have been better. Of course, I would have preferred a new moon. A total darkness. So nobody saw us. But beggars can't be shoes. We reached the logging site and we gain willpower! Hell yes! soon reached the logging site, and I knew we were there only because I voted for direct action. I made a difference. Olga stood in the middle of the clearing, looking at the harvesters. She had a backpack on her shoulder. When she moved, I heard a metallic clatter coming from inside it. Let's get going, she said. She looked different in the dark. She seemed more angular, broader. Fuck it, let's do it! Yeah, let's smash something, I agreed. Olga reached into her backpack. She tossed something my way. It wasn't a hammer, but a can of spray paint. Red spray paint. I'm gonna look at Anya. Anya and I exchanged glances and nodded. We were ready. I glanced over and saw Cornell staring at me. This is a mistake. 
He shook his head and turned away. I'm gonna preserve my willpower. I'm probably gonna need it, and I have zero rage, so I'm just gonna let him say his piece for now. So what could we do better next time? I asked him to elaborate. We could vote for a plan that has a chance to actually help the forest. Cornell rolled her eyes. Oh, Cornell's a girl. Shit. Whatever. Olga noticed the tension between us. People know that I'm right, she said, looking Cornell straight in the eye. You should have noticed that the first time you came here, your plan will destroy lives, he answered. I asked them to stop. Please, I said. We have work to do. The tension broke. Cornell shook his head and turned around. Oh, so Cornell is a dude. What? What the shit? I mean, are they gender fluid? I mean, good on the game for inclusiveness if that's the case, but just... That's a very quick transition, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't judge. I'm not gender fluid. I'm not going to tell people what they can or how they can't uh, operate. Live your truth, Cornell. You pacifist fucking lib. I sneaked on. Careful and quiet, said Lisa. She also looked different. There was camo face paint on her broad cheekbones. There are some guards nearby. I'll take care of them. And with that, she left. The harvesters loomed in the night, now more than ever reminding me of some distorted, terrible creatures straight from a horror movie. Their black cables glistened and pulsed in the moonlight and their stench hit me like a slap in the face. I shook the can. I shook the can and let go the first blotch of paint. It landed on the side of the harvester. For a moment, I thought the machine shuddered like I'd wounded it. A sudden wave of fear rose in my throat. It would turn. It would crush me. I shook the feeling off. I planned the work carefully. Everything was sharp in the moonlight. My hands seemed to shine when I sprayed the machine with the precision of a future surgeon. It wasn't personal. It wasn't about me or the men who would come here tomorrow to find their equipment harmed mutilated. It was about the forest. I should probably at least talk with Cornell. I let Cornell join me, and together we wrote slogan after slogan across the wide flanks of the machines. Olga is walking a dangerous path, he whispered at some point. She's so focused on the act of fighting that she's slowly forgetting what we're fighting for. I wanted to say something, but he stopped me. Just watch her and see what she does next. Eventually, our work for the night was done. I wrote Save the Forest in every language I knew, said Anya, evidently proud of herself. And they might have also Google translated a few more. I looked at the defaced harvesters. I was proud of us. I was proud of what we'd accomplished. And I contributed to it. Ah! Good use of willpower! Whatever the deal with my family was, I felt like I had repaid some of the debt. The paint was slowly drying in the hot night air. Shouts in the night. We stopped for just a minute to admire our work, and for that moment, everything was still and quiet, 
The air smelled of spray paint. The harvesters looked stupid and helpless. And then, the stillness was broken. Hey! What are you- What the fuck?! Oh, shit! Shit, 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 shit! Panicked Anya. The guards! But oh, poor Anya. Fuck it, we're going with the rage. I cracked my knuckles. I took a few fast breaths and cracked my knuckles. I was ready. I looked at the guards. The guards were coming. I saw the silhouettes between the trees, of course. But it wasn't them that caught my attention, it was the trees themselves. The trees had been calling to me since I got here. The trees were on our side. The trees could protect us. They should listen to reason. Fucking no! I let the forest speak through me. We needed to hide. Uh... I mean... As much as I am ready to tear these guards a new one, best not to go... Actively looking for trouble, so um, let's uh, let's just hide for now. I poked Anya and gestured towards the trees. That's another thing. We have to protect the bean. I noticed a spot that would be really hard for them to find. Anya nodded, and we started sneaking towards them. Olga was standing still, though, like most of the others. Side, she could use my help. She looked like she knew what she was doing. I sighed and crept back. Okay, Anya is safe now, and now I'm gonna let the forest speak through me. I took a step toward the guards. You shouldn't be here, I said, feeling the forest around me. I was more than Maya. I realized. For the men in front of me, I wasn't Maya at all. I was a dark shape between even darker shapes. I was the voice of the forest. Men like you, walking in a place like this in the middle of the night, it's unwise. One of them laughed nervously. Is that a threat? You're threatening us, girl! Olga laughed from behind my back. Oh, you have no idea how threatening we are. I looked to Olga. I looked at Olga and she just smiled at me. In the half-light, her teeth looked crooked and pointy. A job is a job, said the closest one to me, a grim shape who pointed his flashlight right into my eyes. We're calling the police. Don't move. We had to get out of there. I thought about Anya and took a few steps back. We couldn't get involved with the police. This was serious. I told you not to move, he shouted. Or what? I asked. He paused, unsure in that instant. The phone flew out of his hand. I don't know how Kim got behind him, but they were there, chuckling mockingly. Oh, sorry, did you want to call someone? The man turned around and punched them right in the face. They didn't even flinch, and then they grabbed the man, lifted him up, and threw him at the other guards. I am helping my friends out here, cause fuck these guys. God, Anya, please be alright. The clearing shattered like a broken window into sharp pieces, its edges cut clean by the rays of a flashlight swirling in the darkness. One piece, a shout, another, a silhouette leaping. A dodge, a grunt, a punch, a cry, 
curses in three different languages. I slipped between the pieces, hiding in the shadows. I body slammed into one of the men, and he stumbled. I threw dirt into his eyes. I knelt on the ground for a split second, scooped up a handful of dirt, and when he went for me, I threw all of it into his face. He cried out in surprise, stumbled, tripped, and fell to the ground with a loud thud. A flashlight shone his way. Anya! Anya screamed and grabbed my arm. I saw blood. Blood on his head, blood on the stone next to his head, blood on the ground, dark and fresh. Oh shit! <laughs> Killed a guy. A victory. Excellent. A victory. I turned away from the man to look for another target. Then I heard a shout. She killed him! One of the men shouted, the horror clear in his face. He directed his flashlight at my face, blinding me. Suddenly, I realized what we were doing. What were we all doing? I asked. Because seriously, what the fuck were we doing in the middle of the night in the heart of the forest? A second later, I noticed a huge silhouette behind him. It looked at me. Its eyes were glowing. Leave her alone! It growled, and I recognized the voice. Was it Olga? It was Olga. She was bulging, muscles growing bigger, bones getting longer. She let out a joyous roar and grabbed the man and slashed him with her claws. What was happening? How could it be real? Why wasn't I scared? I shook my head. Something warm landed on my face. More blood, howls, terrified screams. Anya looked at me, panicked. What do we do? The man screamed again and pointed a gun at Olga. Guns are involved and I need to keep Anya safe. Damn it! I turned and ran. pain. The pain was unbearable. Nothing in my life had prepared me for this. I tried to stop the bleeding. Blinded by the blood in my eyes, I tried to assess the damage. My shoulder and chest burned. The flesh felt wrong and slippery under my fumbling fingers. Blood was pumping out through the broken skin at an alarming rate. I realized it was too late. I stumbled. It was too late. The forest caught my fall with a bed of moss and twigs. I stopped thrashing, and a cold numbness engulfed me. Fuck that shit! No! I tried to get up! I punched the earth, trying to get some feeling in my hands. I gritted my teeth and tried to get up. I collapsed again. I felt so cold. Suddenly there was light. I looked up. The full moon. It looked different. Luna in her full glory. The moon was a goddess, and she noticed me. Get up, she said. I got up. I get up. I feel good. I know that I shouldn't. But I don't remember why. I don't care. My mind is clear. My mind is clearer than it's ever been before. I see 
the world in sharp contrasts of black and white, movement and stillness. I smell prey. I hear language in the hooting of owls, the whistling of the wind, and the snarling of wolves. I am what I was born to be. I stretch. My muscles are sore and cramped, so I stretch like I've never stretched before. My arms are longer, my legs are stronger, my heart is pumping, and I feel like I've spent my whole life packed into a box, and I've finally been set free. I breathe. I take a breath, and I feel my ribs and muscles move. The forest smells of blood, and fear, and excitement. I am happy. I laugh happily, and the other's laughter joins me. We laugh and sing to the moon. Something touches my leg, and I look down. There's a small, malformed creature sticking something sharp in the muscles of my thigh. The creature is no threat to me, but its presence is annoying. Its smell almost sends me reeling, and I don't like being tricked. I rip its head off! I reach out lazily and rip its head off its shoulders. Blood blooms from its neck like a beautiful flower. I throw the head toward the moon. My ears prick and I hear more creatures running blindly through the bushes. I feel better. My leg no longer stinks and I feel better than ever before. Is this a dream? <laughs> Maybe it's a dream, I think as I move silently through the undergrowth. The creatures are running away, their backs turn to me. A growl escapes from between my teeth, and one of them turns my way. It challenges me. I attack! I don't skip a beat, as I lunge at it and close my jaws on its head. The taste is sweet. Piercing light burns my eyes. I hear more creatures coming my way. They want to hurt me. I strike them one by one. I hide in the shadows, and they are too slow, too dumb, too clueless to notice me. I strike them down one by one. Some fight back. Some manage to defend themselves briefly, but most of them don't see me coming. A new smell. The wind brings a new smell. The air tastes of fur and musk and blood. Shapes moving along the trees. But they are no creatures. They are people like me. Suddenly I'm surrounded by them. I think I know them. They seem familiar. It's like I met them in the past, but they were hidden. They close in on me. What do they want? I wait. I relax and wait for them, unflinching. They approach me and sniff the air. Their smells are overwhelmingly familiar. Once, the people had sounds attached to them, but now, I realize the sounds were not their true names. Run with us, they say. I howl with joy. We howl with joy, and everything that hears us trembles with fear. Then we run through the forest and through the night. I get lost in a moment and pay no attention to the others. I am alone in the heart of the forest. I look up see no moon, only clouds and tangled branches. Something changes. Something changed, and I realized how tired I was. I stumbled. Darkness. <laughs> Nothing was okay. The night full of... Nothing was okay. 
The night sky was full of stars. I opened my eyes. Confused, I opened my eyes. The forest around me was thick and dark. The tree trunks wrapped tightly in dark-leaved ivy were covered in ripples of lichen where the vines hadn't taken hold. The thorny, leafless bushes at their base were overrun with nettles. The fungi radiated with a ghoulish, sickly green light. Dark sponge-like mushrooms clung to the fallen trees. I tried to breathe. I took a deep breath and winced. There was a foul smell in the air. <laughs> Suddenly I realized it wasn't the force that smelled so foul. It was me. I looked down and saw my hands covered in a dark substance. I was naked. A sticky, glistening film of liquid was clinging to my skin. I could feel it on my face and my hair. Blood. Whose blood was this? Had I killed someone? I knew what was coming. I remembered my dream and slowly lifted my eyes. Dead bodies were strewn around. There was a severed head right in front of me. I could use the rage. I felt sick. The face was contorted, the eyes bulging, the mouth open, the tongue stuck out. It was obscene. I doubled over, retching. I recognized that face. Oh god. I recognize that face. It was Anya. Her blades covered with dried blood. It was my fault. No! I screamed. I let out a long, blood-curdling scream. The night swallowed it. The bushes rustled, and a moment later, I saw Olga coming out from between the trees. She looked at me, at the head, at my face. She came closer and squatted beside me. It's okay, she patted my shoulder. You're a werewolf. I looked at her, and I blinked. Everything faded to black. Well, fuck! So, good news, I'm a werewolf now and that was metal as fuck, but the bad news is, my best friend and Crush and cinnamon roll is now fucking mutilated and I may or may not be responsible. Fuck. Well. I guess we'll find out what happens next time. If you'll excuse me, I need a minute to go cry in the shower. In the arms of a werewolf, because now you're dead in the dark, foolish forest, because I. Such